Good morning, my dear friends. Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Oh, what a wonderful day to begin the day with God, listening to Him and getting instruction from Him. You know, the, today's subject is the resurrection and its blessing and then ascension of Jesus and its blessing. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has met my greatest need. Spiritual, emotional, mental and physical as well. There is no uh, blessings that I cannot enjoy when I know for truth that Jesus Christ is risen again. Let me name them. <clears throat> Number one, I am assured of a living Savior because Jesus rose again from the dead. Man's greatest problem is what? Is the, is, is the virus of sin, the terrible disease of sin. There is no vaccine for this. Though human history is more than 6,000 years, not almost for every disease and sickness there is a vaccine. But for this sickness, no human vaccine is available, my friends. So that is my greatest need, is what? And what is your greatest need? Since sin problem is my greatest problem and need, my greatest thing that I need is a savior not medicine someone who can save me deliver me then protect me from the power and grip of of a sin and satan and uh, all kinds of demonic temptations that draws me again into temp into into sin Man's greatest need is in not science. In that case, God could have sent a scientist. Man's greatest need is in not information. In that case, God could have sent an, an, an educator. Man's greatest need is not technology. In that case, he could have sent a greatest computer scientist or something to do with technology. Man's greatest need is not money or wealth. In that case, God could have sent a great economist. Then my friends, what is man's greatest need? Since our greatest need was forgiveness from sin and a freedom from the power of sin and influence of sin, God saw this need. He sent a savior. Hallelujah. In this, we can rejoice today. Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father from heaven as the answer to this man's greatest need. And Jesus, the Son of God, who has never, never committed any sin, pure and holy. He came and died and shed his blood for the remission of our sin, humanity's sin. And he's alive at the right hand of God the Father today. What is he doing there? Is interceding on your behalf and on my behalf. The devil is there always to accuse any one of us to God, the Holy One. See, you say he is a good man, he is not a good man. You see, he did this, he did that, and then he started pointing out all the mistakes you have committed, all the sin you committed, all the temptation you yielded to, and say he is not worthy to be. And then 
Jesus Christ rise up. And he said, it is all true, but I shed my blood and my blood covers and cancel all his sin. Because the law of God says without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I have shed my sinless, holy, divine blood for him. Therefore, he is free of guilt and he is innocent. What a savior. That is the great, uh, great blessings of resurrection. But then... How do we obtain it? We believe that Jesus died for me, for us. And then we come to him in humility, not with pride, and in repentance. Truly repent. And that means giving up. Turn around and come, go into another way. You, can, you are walking in the way of sin and death. And then you, when you realize that Jesus is the Savior, and in order to be forgiven by Him, you'll have to turn around and take another path that leads to life. And then you repent. This is a blessing of resurrection of Jesus. If He had only died and shed His blood and not risen again, there would be no salvation for anyone. He is alive and therefore he is able to hear your prayer for forgiveness. Secondly, I am assured of victory over sin and its curses because Jesus rose again. Sin and its curses, Satan and his wiles and temptation, death and eternal, that means eternal separation from this loving God and his love. These were the curses. And the wages of sin is death. We suffer the curses of sin which leads to the final wages or the, uh, the, the, the final judgment. Death. This is the wages of sin. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day acceptable to God for you to come and believe in him and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved why because he stood between God and his justice and righteousness and us and we are reconciled today by this Savior's death and resurrection and by his blood he entered into a relationship with us and therefore come to Jesus in humility and in true repentance not just merely feeling sorry for what you have committed Judas also felt sorry, but he never was forgiven and he went into hell. Why? Because there was no repentance. Come to Jesus today. Though your sin may be as red as scarlet, his blood will cleanse you and make you as pure as white snow. And thirdly, the third blessing of resurrection, I am assured of a sharing resurrection glory. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall not die, but he will live. Though he be dead, he will live. And he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one can come to God, the Holy One, without me. So there is a Savior for you today. And my friends, today is the day. And one of these days, this day will come to a close. 
as Jesus is coming and the end of this age is at the door. And Jesus comes to take away those who have acknowledged him as Lord and Savior. Sharing the resurrection glory is to live with him eternally and reign with him. And uh, when you see him, when he comes for the saints, you shall be changed and you shall be like him. See, after 40 days, after his resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven in front of these disciples. Let me mention four blessings of ascension. These are the three blessings of resurrection. What are these three blessings? I am assured of a living Savior. And he is at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for us. And in his incarnation, when he became a man, we could say there is God with us. His name was Emmanuel, God with us. So when he was here on earth, there was God with men. And in his ascension, now there is a man with God. And so I am assured of a man with God. That's what I was saying. In his incarnation, he was God with man. In his ascension, he was man with God. What a great comfort. As a man, he perfectly understand our feelings. He perfectly understand our pain, our sorrows, our afflictions, our loneliness, because he has gone through all this as a human being. That's why he was born as a man and lived as a man. He was conceived by a woman and he was given birth and he lived as a man. And he has experienced everything that you and I go through. Rejection and exhaustion and hunger. And there is nothing that he cannot understand about you, my friends. Our, 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 uh, he understands our human feelings, our needs, our struggles, our pain. Our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs. In First Timothy chapter two, verse five, we read these words: "For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus." Today we have a mediator between us and the Holy God, and through Him. We bring our petitions and our requests with thanksgiving unto God. There is no need for anxiety or fear because Apostle Paul writing to Philippians, he says, I say rejoice always in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be, gentleness be known to all for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, bring your request to God. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. So why? Because there is a, there is a mediator. Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God the Father interceding for us. Through him, we approach God. It is in Him we are accepted by God Almighty. And so here is it. We are assured of a man with God. And secondly, I am assured of a comforter. By His going back to His Father, Jesus promised His disciples, 
it is good that I go away because if I don't go back to the Father, the Comforter will not come. And who is the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, that's what he did. He sent his promised Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to abide in the believers, to abide with the church. He is today inside the church and he is inside every believer and he is there to lead us and he is there to teach us he is there here with us and in us to comfort us and to show us God's ways and to teach us the mysteries of God's word what a comforter and thirdly you know, this is you read in uh, Gospel according to Saint John, chapter uh, 14, verse 16, and chapter 16, verse 7, concerning the promise of the Holy Spirit. And it, is, it happened because he went back to God, because of his ascension. And thirdly, I am assured of a direct access to the throne of God in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 19 and 20. Let me read that passage for you. Hebrews chapter 10. Nineteen and and twenty. It says, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, opened for us through the curtain that is his body, we can now approach the very throne room of God Almighty through Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, in the temple, there was the court and then the holy place and then the most holy place and the most holy place where God himself dwelt. Nobody was allowed to go except the high priest had to only once a year and that too not without making a sacrifice for his sin. It was closed with a curtain. But when Jesus gave up his life into the hands of God the Father. That very moment, that curtain which separated the most holy place from other places in the, in the temple was torn from top to bottom, thus opening the way into the most holy place. It is a symbolic thing that happened. Today, we have a direct access. We don't need any human uh, uh, mediator. We don't need any saint. We don't need uh, the, 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 the uh, mother, of, uh, mother of Jesus to mediate for us. We have one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, as we read. That is a blessing of the ascension of Jesus Christ. A new and living way is opened by his blood by which we are now able to enter into the very throne room of God Almighty. And uh, uh, into the very presence because Jesus carried his own blood to present there. And by that blood we are acceptable to God. If Christ had not ascended, the way would not have been opened for us. And the Holy Spirit would not have been poured out. The plan of salvation would not have been completed if we had not ascended into heaven. And therefore the fourth blessing of ascension, I am assured of the return of the Savior. To take away his bride, meaning his church. As he has promised in the gospel according to St. John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. I believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house there are many rooms. 
If it had not been so, I would have told you. But I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare it, I will come back and take you so that you may be with me wherever I am. My friends, his coming is very certain. His coming is very soon going to happen. Are you ready? Come to Jesus in humility and in repentance. Acknowledge him as Lord and Savior and live the rest of your life. Whatever is there, even if there is one more day to live, live that day for God once you repent. This is the blessing of resurrection and the blessing of ascension. From God in heaven at the right hand, from there he will come and take us who have hope in his return. God bless you as you get ready for this is the good news. Salvation prepare us for heaven. God bless you. Hallelujah. I pray that you will experience something new today from the Lord Jesus Christ. His presence is with you. The Holy Spirit is in you. And again, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit who will guide you for your daily life and enable you to be strong in the face of temptation. You are an overcomer. You are meant to be a victor. You are meant to be an overcomer. Lord Jesus, I pray that you bless your people, every family, every individual. In Jesus' name, Amen. This is a great day and have a wonderful day. Amen.